Welcome to the garden. Today we'll be exploring whether or not it's worth it to propagate snake plants, or Sansevieria, from leaf cuttings. I propagate these plants in two different ways. One is just by letting them spread new pups and then eventually dividing and separating them, or by taking leaf cuttings and having them root and produce new plants on their own. We can see here some successful leaf cuttings, and this is no easy task. Leaf cuttings can often die back before they even set out roots, let alone new plants. Normally, growing a leaf cutting is as easy as plucking off a leaf and letting it root all on its own. Or you can nestle the stem side into the soil to promote root growth. But snake plants don't grow along the stem in that same way, so we actually have to cut the leaf. This one's actually a bit small, so we could keep it whole. But if they're a bit larger, you might want to cut it in half to get two leaf cuttings. Make sure you keep it upright. They're going to grow roots from this bottom portion. And these fresh cuts need to heal for a couple days before we place it down in water or soil. And both work really well. I generally start them in water and then transfer them to a very small container with soil. The leaves have a fairly high risk of rotting before they set down roots whether you're growing in water or soil. Snake plants are just a little tricky to grow from leaf cuttings. This one is just barely still alive. So we can actually just remove that dead material. It may have rotted away in the water or it may have dried up in the soil, but I'm not giving up on this yet. So let's check up on our water cuttings. I also have here, whoops. <laughs> I also have a little walking bones in here. But if we just look at our snake plant, you can see we have quite a few roots. And these are actually turning orange. They start off white, and as they mature, they do turn orange. It really doesn't matter that these are really thin leaves. They root all the same. Here you can see what it looks like with a little bit broader leaf. You just get those roots right at the bottom. And we'll plant these out in soil after we up-pot these. And this is what we're looking for, these little spiky, brand new plants. So let's just take a look at what we've got here. Wow, look at that. That's beautiful, whoa. You know, this doesn't look like the black gold variety. It actually looks like the other one, but it does appear to be attached. So we're not gonna break that off. That would do too much damage. Look at those roots, they look so good. Oh, that's gonna do great. Here's another one. You can see how they kind of awkwardly just shoot off of the parent plant and then start growing more and more roots. That is attached, just like the other one. And here's one of the other varieties. Look at that, it just shoots right off. And there you can see some white roots, brand new growth. And this sprout is even white. It hasn't even reached the sun yet. Just the very tip is starting to turn green. And this process can take a long time, months. I can't even remember when I took this leaf cutting, but it's finally starting to pay off. And here's another really thin leaf with its own little shoot. So again, that's attached really well, but that's a brand new plant. Beautiful. This is so cool. Even this one has a little one. Look at that just starting off there. And here's a perfect visualization of how your leaf cuttings will start to grow roots and eventually brand new plants. I'll be up potting these into a medium sized container. It's not one of our tiny pots because I want to give them a little bit more space. And I've got it about half full of our succulent potting soil. And you don't need anything fancy. This is just an inexpensive potting mix with a little added perlite. And we'll start with this one that's been growing in an experimentally small pot. I really just think this needs more space at this point. So we're just gonna have to pull, there we go. Wow, look at those roots. <laughs> it's definitely root bound, which is to be expected, but it actually looks quite healthy. We could maybe tease these apart just ever so slightly, but we do risk damaging those roots. 
So I'm going to be very gentle. Break up that round shape a little bit. Edges too, we can just very gently, you can see we're starting to get some nice loose roots here. It's exactly what we want. I don't want to do too much, so we'll stop there. This I'd like to anchor right in the middle. So I'm actually going to dig a little bit deeper for this one. It's okay if it tips over for now. Then I'm going to add our leaf cuttings of the same variety. These are those black gold with the dark green and the gold stripes. And we'll plant the other varieties separately. So I think this is enough. We'll just get it upright and then backfill with that same potting mix. Don't want to bury them too deep, but I do want to anchor it so it's not flopping all over the place. So I'm going to stake this to keep it upright. I'll try to just lean it into the stake. We'll backfill in the other side. And we can situate our leaf cuttings. And I want that new plant to be vertical. The old leaf doesn't matter quite as much. You can see this might be a little tricky until we water it in. And this will really finalize the process. Before we plant the rest of our leaf cuttings, I wanted to check up on our other containers. So we have another small pot here without any drainage. And I think it's starting to show. Some of these leaves are a little bit wavy, so I think we might up-pot this one as well. But one of my favorite containers is a couple leaves here that are shriveled up. Now, I can't remember if these are leaf cuttings that I just tried to root in soil. That's what it looks like. Let's check up on the other ones. This previously set out this whole new plant that I wanted to try to root. It doesn't look like it's doing very well though, so I think we'll just remove it. So that's actually opened up quite a bit of space over here. So I have decided to repot this one in with the other plants. These are the same variety, so they're gonna look really good together. Easy does it. There we go. Look at the shape of the roots. Like a little round bowl. <laughs> but you can see how it needs more space. And tiny pots like this are actually really good when you're just starting new pups. So I think we'll actually use this for our new leaf cuttings. So we'll get these upright, get them situated how we want. I'm gonna try to arrange the new growth so that they're pointing in different directions. That'll give them a little bit more space. And I'm gonna try to hold these together while we backfill in over top. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> a cicada? Gross. <laughs> I'm going to water these in to finalize it. And I will water this one sparingly because it doesn't have any drain holes. Usually it's not too much water that kills your plants. It's watering too much, if that makes sense. So it's actually okay to water really heavily, but you just don't want to water too frequently. And a nice little trick I use to keep these upright is to bind them together with a rubber band. We're just going to be really gentle here but then they can support each other and the rubber band will just lightly grip the leaves just like that. Now we can combine this guy into this pot. So here's how I plant in an already established container. We're just gonna dig a little spot for our plant. It's okay if you damage a few of the roots here. That can even promote new root growth. So it's really not as damaging as it may seem. I'm gonna just test out the size here. Looks like a good fit. So I'm gonna try and situate it so it's nice and balanced. And the biggest leaf, I'm gonna to lean towards the center. Just about like that. Try to get it upright if we can. I'm gonna have to weave it through there, that looks good. And then we'll simply backfill in. I'm just reusing that soil. We can pick out some of those old roots just for appearance sake, but they won't do any harm. And before I forget, we're gonna take our leaf cuttings with roots and plant them out into soil. So I'm actually starting with an empty container this time. We're just reusing that same tiny pot because that dries out really quickly, which means we can water more frequently, promoting more root growth. We'll just top them up with soil. 
perfect. And tomorrow, once these cuttings have had time to heal, we'll add them to the water to set down roots. And we'll just wrap up the day by giving everything a nice, healthy drink. Our new transplants, our brand new containers, our little leaf cuttings, which are sitting out roots and new pups, and even the old containers in the back here. As I get more and more snake plants, I'll generally let them produce new pups and then divide them once they're overcrowded. And to promote new growth, we can just give them a little bit more sun. But I do still occasionally take leaf cuttings, especially if they're floppy or out of place. So I don't recommend you take leaf cuttings from a beautiful, healthy plant unless the leaf is overhanging or otherwise out of place. So I hope you picked up some tips for your snake plants Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time.